Hey guys, let's go on. So let's get into it. So the first question here is, hello, my name is Corbin and I'm 14 years old. I want to start making YouTube videos. Do you have any recommendations for an affordable camera? Yes, I do. I personally feel when you're getting into videos, use the stuff you have. And if you're watching this channel, you probably have some sort of iOS device, whether that's an iPhone or an iPad. And um, you can definitely edit your videos on an iPad or even an iPhone with LumaFusion and things like that. So if you have an iOS device laying around, whether that's yours or your parents, if it's a newish iOS device, it's gonna, actually not even newish, if it's a few years old, um, it's still gonna shoot 1080p. And if it's newer, it's gonna shoot 4K. So Try using that. Try using that. Get your get your videos off the ground. In some case that you don't have an iOS device laying around that you can use, I would check out the wire cutter. I, I don't have a bunch of experience using affordable cameras. I'll leave a link in the description below. Those guys are terrific. They try out so many different gear and so many different cameras and things like that to really see what the best is. They have the best option. They have a runner up option. They always have an affordable option in there too. So price is a huge issue. Um, they'll have something in there for you. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Bruno asks, always a pleasure to watch your videos all made on the iPad Pro. Thank you, Bruno. I'd be, I'd be very interested to know which apps are on your iPad Pro and iPhone 10 and why such a choice. So I did a video um, probably a couple months ago, uh, right, right after I iOS 11 came out, um, and I really sat down and rethought the way my home screen was laid out. Um, on what apps are on my iPad Pro. So I'll link that in the description below. Um, I do have a plan to do a video for my iPhone 10. Just know, kind of, they're not the same. It, the, my iPhone 10 is vastly different than my iPad Pro. So I do have a plan to do a full video on my iPhone 10. I think it'd be too long just for this one video to go over everything. So keep an eye out for that. I will give you a hint though. It's a lot of uh, calendars and task managers. My, my, I don't think I could get through a single day without my iPhone. So look forward to that. I will be doing that video, I promise, and it'll be coming soon. Simon asks, what Apple devices do you have and what features will be in the new iPad Pro this spring? What Apple devices I have? So I have an iPhone 10. Um, I have an iPhone 7 Plus that I kind of use as a backup camera that I just keep around. Um, I have an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I used to have a iPad Air 2 that I would just use for like reading and leisure stuff and stuff, but I wasn't really using it, especially since the iPhones have gotten bigger. So I sold that to my brother. Um, I have a Mac Mini that is my server. It's a media server, so it runs Plex and things like that. It also runs some um, home automation stuff that I think I'm gonna do a video about. Um, I have the new Apple TV, um, an Apple Watch. So those are the Apple devices I have. Um, I definitely love all of them. I, I use all of them. Now, what features are going to be in the iPad Pro this spring? Well, first off, I don't think there's going to be an iPad Pro this spring because they're typically on an 18 month cycle, somewhere between a 12 month to 18 month cycle. So I, don't, I think the spring will be too soon since we got them in the summer this year. So I'd look for them in the fall. Now, as far as what features I think they will have, I think they're going to take a lot from the design of the iPhone 10. I think they're gonna be edge to edge. I'm very much hoping for Face ID. It feels antiquated now to use Touch ID, and I know how silly that sounds. Um, I know what, how ridiculous that sounds that, hey, Touch ID is still really good, especially on the new iPad Pro since it has the Touch ID version two. Uh, but the um, Face ID, it just, it works so well, I absolutely love it. Um, I think the only hurdle that would keep Face ID off the iPad is if Apple's not able to make Face ID work in landscape. Because right now, currently on the iPhone 10, Face ID only works in portrait mode. You, you can't turn it sideways and have it work. So I think that would be the only thing that would keep Face ID off the iPads. So um, edge to edge design, um, I think we'd get the notch, which really isn't a big deal for those that might freak out. Had the iPhone 10 since it came out, I don't even notice the notch anymore. Um, I think Face ID, I don't think we'll get an OLED pair, OLED screen just because OLED screens are really hard to come by right now just because the, the only decent manufacturer of them is Samsung and it seems like Samsung's having a hard time keeping up with demand and an OLED screen of that size, I just, I don't, I don't see it coming. So I think they'll still be LCD screens, but, um, I, I think, um, 
We'll obviously get a faster processor, which I'm very excited about. Every time, I know a lot of people are just kind of roll their eyes at the when Apple gets up on stage and this is our fastest device ever. Um, but for me, as somebody that's doing 4K video editing, um, photo editing, a little bit of development work and stuff like that, having a faster iPad every year, oh, just it, it's so it's so nice. It's so nice to just be able to use a device and know that it's it's a at its peak performance it's it's going to outperform even things like the macbook so um that's what i'm hoping for i definitely think we need a new design of the ipad i think um having the the same design that we've had for basically since it came out um it's kind of it's getting a little old. I think it does need its iPhone 10 moment and it does need a refresh. Guy asks, you mentioned you do some coding. How much coding have you done on your iPad Pro? How was it? Are there any major hurdles to overcome? What apps do you use? I'm a PHP slash MySQL coder and I'm thinking seriously about ditching my Dell laptop and getting an iPad Pro for coding. Since I'm working on websites, I would also need a good FTP support. So I've done some website stuff like you. I've done some PHP stuff. I've done some HTML stuff. Um, I know enough of those things to be dangerous. I would not say I'm good at those. Uh, most of my development work has been iOS apps, so stuff with Objective-C and Swift. The apps and stuff that I've been using are Coda. Um, Coda is made by an, um, a company called Panic Software. If you haven't heard of Panic, I definitely recommend to check them out. If you're a Mac or an iOS user, they have terrific software. Coda is an app, it's very versatile, it's very, um, it supports Swift and Objective-C for what I've done, but it also, and I, I checked this right before I did this video, it does support PHP and SQL as well. Um, it ha has the ability to export your um, code right from the app. Um, I believe there's FTP support built right in, but Panic also makes another app called Transmit. And Transmit, its whole job is just to be an FTP client. Um, so what I would do if I was in your shoes is I would look at Transmit and Coda. And I'll put links to those both in the description below um, so you can check those out. But both of those apps serve me very well. I use Transmit every time I do a video. That's how I get um, my video, my 4K video file to my server. And it works so well, it's it's fantastic. So um, I would definitely look at those. As far as any major hurdles to overcome and stuff like that, um, not really, especially for a web developer, I think you'll be fine. Coda is really meant for web development. If you look at it, I think you'd be pretty impressed with for a web developer that with that application. So uh, next up, Jeff. Uh, Jeff has five questions. I didn't say limit one, so eh, that's cool with me. Um, so Jeff's first question is, you do a ton on your iPad for videos, but what do you do with your iPad for leisure time? By that I mean, what do you do when you aren't working on your videos on your iPad? What apps do you recommend for just relaxing? Um, so for me, for just relaxing, I like to listen to a lot of podcasts. So I use an app called Overcast for podcast listening um, for two main features, smart speed and voice boost. Voice boost basically makes the whole podcast a little bit louder. And smart speed, what it does is it strips the silence um, by I believe it's like 40% or something in between when people are talking. So it speeds up the podcast a little bit. So it allows you to listen to more podcasts um, without having to you know manually speed it up and make everybody sound like chipmunks. Other apps that I use for leisure time, I use uh, Instapaper to save articles and stuff that I find on the internet that I read. Um, I've been playing a little bit of games. Um, I have in my one of my late last videos, I did a video about my favorite accessories for 2017. I bought a uh, controller that works with the iPad this year. So I've been playing a lot of games that support the controller. I'll, I'll link to all that below in the description. Um, other than that, mostly just goof off Twitter, you know, things like that. Uh, I, I try and separate my, my work, um, on my iPad from my leisure time. So I don't really, when I'm just playing around, I don't really use my iPad pro to goof off. I usually use my iPhone or something like that. Jeff's next question is there are a lot of apps. Many people recommend they try once when they get their first iPad, but what is the app that you don't see often list online and what do you think should be there? Why is that? Um, so for me personally, I think LumaFusion is the app that probably gets left off the most. Um, and I think it's because a lot of people that do video stuff don't think the iPad can do full multi-track video editing. And I think I've proved that wrong. Um, so I think that is the app. 
If you're interested in video in any way, I definitely think you should check it out. I believe it's 20 bucks and I know a lot of people think that's expensive for an app, but if you look at multi-track non-linear editors, that is incredibly cheap. I would definitely check it out for 20 bucks if you're interested in video, that's not very much to get into video stuff. What are your plans for the channel as you head towards 6,000 subscribers? What are some of the things you wanna give us a sneak preview on? So I think for this next year, and I've kind of been thinking about this a lot, um, what I kind of want to do for my next set of videos and what's coming up. And I've done a lot of videos focusing on specific apps, some of my favorites. So I did some on Overcast, OneWriter, Do, Bear. Um, I did one on Opener, things like that. Um, but what I want to start doing is I want to start looking at categories of apps. So I actually already just did the first video that I, I'm kind of th thinking about this. And um, it's based on shelf apps. So I, I wanted to take a look at iPad productivity apps, but specifically shelf apps. And, and why I want to do this is so you can kind of see the category as a whole. And then I want to feature some of the apps that are in that category. So you can make a decision for what app would fit best for you. Um, I don't want to make that decision for you. I want to show you some of the best apps in that category. Some of the apps that I feel are exemplary for that. So I plan on doing that for video stuff. I plan on doing that for development stuff, photo editing, um, writing, things like that. So look forward to those. I should have the first uh, video in that series out um, sometime this week. Um, and it'll be on shelf apps. If someone came to you and said they wanted to make a video about iPad, what, what advice would you give them? So first off, I'm gonna pull that question back a little bit and I'm just gonna answer, if somebody came to me and wanted to make videos, what advice would I give them? Find something you're passionate about. Whatever it is, um, if it's Legos or technology or makeup or cars, Find what you're passionate about and just start doing it. Don't look to see if anybody else has done a video on what you wanna do. Just start doing it, just start making the videos. People will find them um, and they'll start watching, they'll start subscribing. That's what happened for me. I got into, I was, I'm interested in apps and iPad stuff. So I started making videos on apps. Then I did one on the Apple Watch. Then I started doing stuff on the iPad and um, it just grew from there. So find what, you're interested in and just start making it. Now, specifically about the iPad, um, for me personally, I would probably still do it the same way that I did. Start off small, focusing on like applications or hardware, or something very specific, and then slowly grow from there. Don't just jump in and wanna talk about the iPad as a whole, cause it'll feel very overwhelming. Talk about something specific and then start to grow out from there. Um, I think that's the easiest way just to kind of get your feet wet and also kind of really learn how this whole process works. Your iPad can only hold three apps outside the stock apps it comes with. What three apps do you download and why? So I think it would be LumaFusion, Affinity Photo, and Transmit. Where I would be really sad to give up workflow, I think I could still do everything I'd wanna do. It would just take me a little bit longer and I wouldn't be able to automate all the tasks. Those three apps right there, coupled with all the built-in apps, so Notes, Mail, uh, Safari, I think I could still make all these videos, still do my job, but I would need those three apps, I think. John asks, could you tell us how you would improve your own setup? Anything on your wish list, either hardware or software? Hardware wise, I got two things. So first off, iPad productivity wise, I, um, I wanna get a mechanical keyboard. I've always really liked mechanical keyboards. I've had a couple in the past, um, not really super nice ones. And mechanical keyboards are a little trickier because there's not really a good one that comes with Bluetooth support. And I say that now and I'm probably sure there's probably is a good one with Bluetooth support, but the ones I like usually have a USB cable going to them. Um, so I'm looking at a couple right now and I think I have a, I, there's a way that you can get them hooked up to an iPad. So if I do go down that route, I'm gonna definitely be doing a video on using mechanical keyboards with an iPad. Um, so keep an eye out for that too. The other thing that I'd like to get as far as video wise is if you haven't noticed, this corner back here is really dark. Um, I have a, I have one window in this room and it's way over here. So this corner over here doesn't get any light. So I want to get a light kind of, um, a nice white light to, to reflect in that, that corner over there so I can get the lighting to be a little bit more even in here. Um, that's one of the things that always bugs me every time I'm doing a video edit is I can never get the lighting even in this room. It drives me absolute bananas. So um, I'm looking at a few different options right now to get a light for that corner. That's it for Q&A video number two, guys. 
Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate all the subscriptions, all the views, all the likes. Thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. Have an awesome day and keep being awesome.